We're now going to talk about vectors in two and three dimensions. Let's start with a two-dimensional case. So a two-dimensional vector is just a pair of real numbers. And I write it as a equals a1, a2. So this letter a with the arrow on top of it is the vector. And these two numbers, a1 and a2, are called the components of the vector. And these components are real numbers. In the book, a vector is denoted by a bold-faced letter, but using the pen, I can't really draw a bold-faced letter to make it clear which is bold and which is not bold, so I'll put an arrow on top instead. In more advanced classes, sometimes vectors are just denoted by plain letters. And I'll use angle brackets to set off the components of the vector, but sometimes one just uses parentheses. Okay, so that's the notation for a vector. And what is the geometric significance? Well, in the xy plane, a vector can be thought of as an arrow. So it has a starting point, sometimes called the tail, and it has an end point, sometimes called the head of the vector. And you'd imagine a vector, sorry, an arrow, going from the tail to the head, and this is the vector. And this arrow is supposed to move to the right distance a1 and up distance a2. So this is the case where a1 and a2 are positive. If a1 is negative, you actually move to the left. And if a2 is negative, you actually move down. Now, I only care about the difference between the head and tail of the vector. I don't care about where the arrow is actually placed. So I could translate this arrow to get some other arrows in the plane. And these are copies of the vector a. So I've just translated them, but I think of them as being the same thing. So you can think of it as an arrow up to translation. You can also think of it as having a direction and a length. We'll talk about that a little later. OK, now there are various basic operations we can do on vectors. The first of these is addition of vectors. So suppose I have another vector b with components b1 and b2. We define a plus b by adding the components. So the first component is a1 plus b1, and the second component is a2 plus b2. Now, what does this mean geometrically? Well, the geometric meaning is you can take the vector a, regarded as an arrow, and then you can append to it the arrow b. So you put the tail of the vector b on the head of the vector a. And now if you go from the very start of a to the very end of b, this arrow is the sum a plus b. Why is that? Well, Let's look at the horizontal displacement of A, that's A1, and the vertical displacement is A2, and then the horizontal displacement of B is B1, and the vertical displacement of B is B2. So in this combined vector, the total horizontal displacement is A1 plus B1, and the total vertical displacement is A2 plus B2. So that's why it's the vector A plus B we can, in fact, complete the picture into a parallelogram. So I have A here, I have B here, I have a parallel copy of B here, and a parallel copy of A here. So this diagonal of the parallelogram is A plus B. By the way, we could look at another diagonal of the parallelogram. We could look at this diagonal, like this. What vector is that? Well, if you look at the picture, you see that the vector b plus this blue vector is equal to the vector a. So that means that the blue vector is a minus b. Where a minus b is defined by 
a1 minus b1, comma, a2 minus b2. All right, so that's addition and also subtraction of vectors. The next basic operation on vectors is multiplication of a vector by a scalar. Now, scalar is just a fancy term for real number. One uses this term just in the context of vectors to distinguish vectors from real numbers. So we define the scalar c times the vector a to be the vector obtained by multiplying all of the components of a by c. So the components are c a1 and c a2. And what's the geometric meaning of this? So if c is bigger than 0, then c a points in the same direction as a. And the length is multiplied by c. And if c is n negative, then this points in the opposite direction. The length is multiplied by, well, the absolute value of c. So here's the picture. So if here's my vector a, then 2 times a is going to point in the same direction, but it's going to go twice as far. So this is the vector 2a. By the way, that's the same thing as a plus a. If I want to look at 1 half a, that's only going to go half as far, like this. And if I multiply a by minus 1, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So this is minus 1 times a, but that's sometimes also denoted simply by minus a. And minus 2a would look like this. You get the idea. Okay. The next basic operation we can do on vectors is to talk about the length of a vector. The length of a vector, a equals a1, a2, is defined by, so this notation for it is we put vertical lines around the a, and this is the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. This is sometimes also called the norm, or the magnitude of a. And the geometric meaning of this is pretty obvious. If I think of a as an arrow, then this is just the length of the arrow. Because remember, we move distance a1 to the right, or to the left if it's negative, and a2 up, or down if it's negative. And so by the Pythagorean theorem, the length of this arrow is the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. One basic property is that the length of the scalar c times the vector a is the absolute value of c times the length of a. So in this equation, note that the vertical lines mean different things in different places. So here on the left, these vertical lines refer to the length of a vector. These vertical lines here around the c refer to the absolute value of a real number, while these last two vertical arrows again refer to the length of a vector. Okay, so what's the proof? So the length of CA is the length of the vector CA1 comma CA2. So that's the square root of CA1 squared plus CA2 squared so that's the square root of c squared times a1 squared plus a2 squared. Now I can pull the c out of here, but I have to put an absolute value around it. So I get the absolute value c times the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. So this is the absolute value of c times the length of a. Okay, so that was easy. Um, a little warning is that length is not so well behaved with addition. So usually, 
the length of a plus b is not the same thing as the length of a plus the length of b. How there is, however, there is a useful fact, which is the triangle inequality. which says that the length of a plus b is always less than or equal to the length of a plus the length of b. We'll be able to prove this a little later after we talk about the dot product. Now, so far we've talked about vectors in two-dimensional space. Vectors in three-dimensional space are analogous. So a three-dimensional vector has three components, say a1, a2, a3. And geometrically speaking, what a three-component vector is, is it's an arrow in three-dimensional space, where a1 is the total x displacement, a2 is the total y displacement, and a3 is the total z displacement. And we don't care where the vector is, so we can translate it to a different place in space, and it's considered the same vector. And then the basic operations that we defined before work analogously. So if b is another vector with components b1, b2, b3, then a plus b is obtained by adding the components. So it's a1 plus b1, comma a2 plus b2, comma a3 plus b3. If c is a scalar, then c times a is obtained by multiplying the components of a by c. So it's c a1, comma c a2, comma c a3. And the length of the vector a, by our distance formula in three-dimensional Euclidean space, it makes sense to define this as the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. And by the same argument as before, the length of c times a is the absolute value of c times the length of a. In fact, all of this generalizes in a pretty obvious way to n-component vectors, which represent vectors in n-dimensional space. However, in this course, we'll only go up to three dimensions.